Hello, and welcome to a place for new ways of thinking and doing. This is Innovation Workshop. The electronic circuit is an innovation that has impacted our culture more than anything else this past century. From self-driving cars, to the most advanced rockets, to the cell phone in your pocket, the electronic circuit is the biggest small thing around. An electronic circuit contains many different components. These components are separate parts that can be used to control the electric current. Over time, electronic circuits have improved as new components have been invented and improved. An electric circuit is a path for electrons to flow. A battery or other source of electrical energy gives the force, or voltage, to start the movement. The rate of the flow is called the current. In a series circuit, the current has only one path to move. If one component stops working, the current stops. But in a parallel circuit, there is more than one pathway. Components are parts that can be added to build a more complex circuit. Remember, the circuit needs to be complete. All the connections from the power source need to return back again. Here is one of the first high vacuum tubes that started us on the way to the wonders of our electronic age. See, the vacuum tube was an early electronic component. Kind of looks like, and works like, a light bulb. The electric current moves between electrodes in an airtight container. It strengthened the electric current, which enabled more complex circuits to be created. This led to new technologies. Hundreds of them were installed as amplifiers, thus making possible the first telephone line between New York and San Francisco. And 3,000 mile transcontinental telephone calls became a reality. Radio broadcasts, television, and military radar were technologies that quickly developed as a result of the vacuum tube. Even early computers used vacuum tubes. The ENAC was proclaimed to be a giant brain that could solve the most complex calculations. Though it was said all the lights in Philadelphia dimmed when it was powered on. See, vacuum tubes require too much energy. They easily overheat and need lots of space for ventilation. In 1948, the solution was invented at the Bell Telephone Laboratories. This is the first transistor. Though it looks too crude and bulky to be considered electronics, this transistor paved the way for all the electronics in your life. Arising from basic research on solid substances and how the electrons inside them behave. How did it all come about? Well, doctors Shockley, Bardeen, and Bratton and their associates at the Bell Telephone Laboratories we're working on a problem in pure research, investigating the surface properties of germanium, a substance known to be a semiconductor of electricity. Their study suggested a way to amplify an electric current within a solid, without a vacuum or a heating element. And after months of calculations, experiments, tests, the transistor was born. These scientists won a Nobel Prize for the invention of the first point contact transistor, which replaced the need for vacuum tubes and there were many variations that soon followed. The transistor is far more energy efficient than a vacuum tube. It can be packaged into a smaller container to be compact without the problem of overheating. This is how my voice would sound over a 75 mile telephone line that has no amplifying device. Now, with a transistor amplifier in the line, my voice is amplified so that you can hear me distinctly. Transistors are considered to be the most important technological innovation of this past century. So why exactly are they so amazing? Because they have two functions, to strengthen the electric signal and to act as a switch. The switch is actually the coolest part, on or off, one or zero. This switching function enables the use of binary code, which is a number system used to process information. It is the language of computers. Here's the word hello in binary code. See, all computers speak in ones and zeros. Even colors have binary code, like this. So every color you see and every word you read on an electronic device is a result of binary code processing that information. So how exactly does a transistor work? Well, you'll probably need an advanced degree in physics or electrical engineering like these people to learn how to really design one. Essentially, a transistor has three different layers that are each connected to the circuit. The electric charge flows through until a voltage is applied from another connection. This pinches the electric current and shuts off the switch. 
There are different kinds of transistors, and scientists are still studying semiconductor materials to better control the movement of electrons. Over time, transistors have become smaller and smaller. In fact, they're so small that the human eye or even your school's microscope can't see them. This small size enables them to be packaged inside a microchip. And if you can pack more transistors into a microchip, then you can process more information at faster rates. It's all about processing speed and ability. Consider this. In 1974, this microchip was the first commercially available microprocessor. Inside, it had 2,300 transistors and was used in this calculator. Compare that to one of the newest microprocessors that has over 7 billion transistors. With it, you can add filters to 1,400 Instagram pics in one minute, watch the highest definition movies while shopping online, or play one of your favorite games. Oh yeah, it can also run a calculator. Transistors switching an electric current on and off to process information is an essential part of your everyday life.